Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day because I just discovered something amazing that we are going to be covering in today's video. After a long look around in the desert here and in a few other biomes in the surrounding area, I have found myself a newly generated 1.14 structure, the Pillager outpost and the coolest thing about this is that we're also going to be finding some pillagers in this we have not been able to discuss pillagers yet they have not come up and i even spent a few nights off camera just waiting near a village to see if a pillager patrol would randomly spawn but it seems like it is much more reliable to find pillagers around one of these outposts if you want to encounter them at all. In the right conditions, they have a chance to spawn even during the day in areas where there are no player placed light sources, but there is an adequate amount of sky light. Uh, they won't spawn in caves and stuff like that, but they will spawn out there in the wild occasionally. But it is so occasionally that I figured the best way to actually encounter pillagers was to go over to one of these outposts and show you. So. We're going to approach cautiously, they're already spawning around the outside and they will actually continue to spawn around the outside. These are structures much like witch huts or guardian temples that with the right player proximity will actually spawn pillagers. Oh gosh, oh, there's two of them, right. <laughs> so you see these guys with the banners on their heads, we're going to talk about those in a moment. But the main thing you will see around here, let me just quickly zoom in so we can get a good look at them from a safe distance are these guys the pillagers and you'll notice they're holding their arms out in front of them because they're actually carrying crossbows so these guys have a new advanced form of weaponry which we are going to be hopefully getting hold of thanks to this raid and if not it's actually possible to craft them but i haven't been crafting them myself because i wanted you guys to see the pillagers in action all right without further ado i think we're going to be running in and raiding this thing so let's see how we fare against these guys and their crossbows. We're going to be trying to pick them off one at a time, and they will get to within about six blocks of you, load up their crossbow and fire. But the crossbows do take a while to load, so you might actually be able to get the drop on them while they're reloading their weapons. This is a very different way to how you fight skeletons. But yep, there we go. <laughs> Got a hit on one of the banner guys. Not to worry, there is a whole bunch of them here though. And my shield is taking an absolute beating right now. Oh, one of the patrol leaders just went down. He got shot by his friend. <laughs> they won't actually attack each other if they end up shooting each other, but it is very easy to trick them into firing on other members of their squad. Let's take this guy out while we can. Yes, there we go. Okay, <laughs> we got an advancement for that. We got the voluntary exile advancement, and I'm going to voluntarily exile myself right now because I need to eat something and heal up. These guys are pursuing me like nobody's business and oh boy there's a whole lot of them now this is like a firing squad <laughs> but as you can see from the fact that they are killing off their own repeatedly here these guys are not the brightest although i'm not the brightest for trying to take on seven of them at once so how about we regroup again here so we will talk about this in a little bit more detail in just a second but the effect you can now see that i have right here is called bad omen and that will actually last for 100 minutes it in fact it lasts for so long that the uh, number counter here doesn't even want to display the number until it gets down below a certain time. We got one of these ominous banners here <laughs> that actually named ominous banner. That's pretty cool. But that is a design you can make yourself if you choose to. I think we're going to have to use a combination of tactics to get into here. We're going to have to start shooting them with bows from a distance. And then when they get close enough to draw and fire on us, we're actually going to have to try rushing them a little bit like so. Yes, there we go. Okay, that's a, a decent strategy. Hopefully we can get up to this guy. Yep. There we go. Okay, he's taking a couple of pot shots at us, but oh boy, there's a lot of them now. Ha! <laughs> get wrecked. Luckily, these guys don't have the best aim in the world, but oh, there's lots of them there. <laughs> there's lots of them there. It seems like the best thing to do here is going to be to kind of kite them around in a circle so they don't all keep respawning over here. And then if we want to get inside the structure, we're probably going to have to rush one of the entrances. There we go. Let's see if we can make it up to the top here. This is quite the challenge. I'm kind of surprised. I was expecting these guys to be more of a pushover. But nope, here we have the high ground. We're at the top and we can claim their loot, which is quite frankly not worth it. We have a few tripwire hooks, a few arrows, and some dark oak logs, a couple of food supplies, but we have managed to get ourselves a crossbow in the melee of fighting all of those guys. Now let's load it up 
and see what this thing can do. There we go, we have knocked an arrow, and unlike bows, which you have to draw back and then let go to fire, these crossbows can actually be fired as soon as they're loaded. So you can load up the weapon beforehand and then just unload it. There we go, to get the advancement, old Betsy. And uh, that's going to be a fun thing to do. If these guys would not crowd me on the stairs, that would be favorite. Thank you. Oh, boy. I think we might have just killed another one. I think we got another ominous banner from that guy. All right. All right. All right. Okay. That's that's probably my cue to make a hasty exit here. Woohoo! <laughs> right. So there. There we go. That is... That is quite the challenge. And it does seem like they will just spawn and spawn and spawn in that area. Now you'll notice there are a couple of other features around a pillager outpost. The desert temple in the background is not one of them. There are these little target practice dummies that they have over here, and they have some pumpkins and melons in a little tent over there. You will find these spawning elsewhere in the world, sometimes in tiger biomes, sometimes in plains biomes, basically anywhere in the same biome that a, uh, a, a village can spawn, and they'll sometimes spawn with completely different buildings either side of them. For example, you'll find one that's got an iron golem spawning with it, in a cage and if you let the iron golem out of that cage then maybe it will help you attack some of the pillagers although I honestly don't know how long it would last. Aside from the fact that I am now a complete pincushion full of arrows you will also see that we now have bad omen 2. We have managed to kill two of the patrol leaders and it doesn't matter whether or not you pick up the banners you get the effect automatically when you kill one of the guys who is wearing these banners. Now, as with other potion effects, I'm fairly certain that this can be removed if you drink a bucket of milk. So I might actually go and find a cow in this nearby savanna and make sure that we can dispel the effect before I tell you exactly what it does. There we go, herd of cows over here. Let's see if we can drink some milk to get rid of that effect. Yep, there we go, it is gone completely. So regardless of which level of bad omen you have, if you don't want to have it, then you can just go ahead and clear it with a bucket of milk, the same as you would any other potion effect. And while I'm here with all of these crossbows in my inventory, I might as well go ahead and... Oh, that one's loaded. Okay, right, well, maybe we'll have to discharge this particular firearm before we can repair... No, of course you can't repair stuff anymore. You have to have a grindstone. Okay, well, uh, let's go and visit the nearby village now I've cleared this bad omen effect, and let's see if we can repair these crossbows together on a grindstone. Maybe the blacksmith will have one. This is a lovely little village, actually. We've got a little adobe terrace over here, which I'm actually going to sleep for the night in <laughs> so that I can make sure that stuff doesn't spawn around me. And given how low I'm running on fireworks, I'll have to see... I don't have an ender chest on me. I'll have to see if I can grab some sugarcane. Uh, maybe I'll steal a little bit from the shepherd over here. Maybe we can grab a little bit along the banks of this river as well, because I need to make myself some more fireworks in a hurry. And then just next door to that row of houses, we have a blacksmith, and yes, they have a grindstone. Perfect. Okay, so let's see if we can repair this crossbow. Brilliant. There we go, and we can repair it up to full strength. Unfortunately, I do not have an enchantment table with me right now, so I can't enchant it, but we'll go into the enchantments for this a little bit later in this episode. For now, I need to find myself a house with a crafting table. Looks like it's meeting time, so everyone is gathered around the village bell. That's very cool. I have not seen some of these house designs before actually. I think some of these are brand new to me. The villages actually have quite a variety of designs now. Different colored beds will spawn in some of the houses and there are different shapes for each of the houses a lot of the time. So you'll find a great variety in village and no two villages really feels the same anymore. There we go. This one's got a crafting table. Good stuff. So I will probably just to make myself a few fireworks. If you're wondering why I have so much meat and uh, leather in my inventory, by the way, it's because I was trying to repair my elytra while I was waiting for a pillager patrol to spawn out in the wild, and yeah, I had to repair my elytra with mending a couple of times just by killing some nearby animals. Anyway, now we've managed to repair this crossbow, I'm about to inflict an unfortunate event on this village, because we're going to go back to the pillager outpost over here, I'm going to try and find another one of those guys with the banners, and let's see what happens when we trigger the bad omen effect once again. This time I'm going to stay on the outskirts of this area, and it is a pretty wide radius that they'll be able to spawn in and it looks like that guy's already spotted me. Let's see if he continues to track towards me when I break line of sight. Looks like he does. You're a smart one, aren't you? 
There you go. <laughs> Taking these guys on one-on-one -on -one is not that difficult, but when there's five or six of them all firing at you at once, it does get a little bit difficult to handle. So <laughs> I recommend taking these guys out stealth style if you possibly can. Things are getting a little hot in here, and I have not yet seen one of the other guys with the banners. So I'm going to keep circling around. I might have to, yep, take a quick flight and then <laughs> despawn some of these guys, and then they will respawn again when I get close. So there ain't no harm in running away for a second here. And oh boy, your inventory fills up with crossbows after you've been fighting a few of these guys. It's like fighting skeletons. Okay, let's go around for another pass and see if we can track down a patrol leader. Those are the guys with the banners on their heads, and hopefully we should be able to track down one and just get a single bad omen effect, ideally. I don't really want to go in with more than bad omen one right now. Maybe we'll try some other levels when we're feeling brave. Yes, there's one now. Okay, let's try and lead him out a little bit further away. We can take him out from a distance if we need to. But yeah, leveling bows at these guys, keeping them at range seems to be a very good idea if you don't have a shield on you right now. They want to get about six blocks away from you. There we go. They want to get six blocks away from you before they draw their weapon and fire. So you can usually keep them at range pretty well with a bow. Obviously, it doesn't mean you make up much ground if you're trying to raid one of these things. But now we've got that bad omen effect, I'm going to head over to the village and show you what happens. Because the bad omen effect will actually trigger an event called a raid when you walk into a village with the bad omen effect active. And unfortunately, this doesn't mean anything good for the inhabitants of that village because pillagers will start running in from the outside and attacking the townsfolk. And much like zombies, pillagers will go after villagers, which is why in the natural generation of things, they don't tend to spawn too close to a village. This guy has tracked me all the way from that tower. Well, points for like tenacity, I guess, but I'm sorry, mate, you're going down. And hopefully with just bad omen one, the raid itself should not be anything too difficult to deal with. But as soon as I enter the boundary of this village, which should be relatively soon, you will see a progress bar starts to fill up. There we go, and the raid begins. Now, on the outside of this village, at various points, you're going to see some pillagers spawning, and they'll ring the bell, which means it's time to get inside because a raid is about to start. There we go, the bell rings, and somewhere on the outskirts of the village, we should start to see some pillagers coming in for a fight. The Iron Golem is here to help protect them, of course, but I have a feeling some of these villagers may not last the duration of this raid. Now the bar is full. Where are they? Ah, oh, they're coming from the direction of the outpost as well. Very cool. All right. Let's see how many of these guys we can take out. Let's defend these farmers if we can. Now, some of these raids will actually have different people than just the pillagers. There we go. The uh, progress bar is going down here, but you'll see this guy with the, uh, yeah, he's actually a vindicator. The the guy with the banner and they will actually take out and they will basically equip the banner and they'll each become the captain if they can pick the banner up <laughs> so that's actually quite a a neat feature there you see the vindicator was the leader and then the other guy became the leader in the end that is wave one of that raid done and it looks like we may be due for a second wave so this is like a wave survival kind of mode now where you'll find the pillagers start to respawn and another raid comes in, maybe from a different direction even. Yep, there you go. There's a guy spawning over there. Looks like a few more pillagers this time, maybe one or two more than we had in the last wave. And there are actually three Vindicators. So the Vindicators will run around and much like the Vindicators in a woodland mansion, they will try and uh, attack everything and anything with axes. These guys are having a really bad time crossing the river, which is actually making this very easy for me. But in the end, you'll find that they end up dropping emeralds and stuff like that. They will drop axes. This is actually a really interesting new way of farming emeralds if you don't feel like just doing a bunch of trading. The raid bar will disappear when you leave the village, so if you want to just leave the villagers to their fate, then you can. But if your bad omen effect is particularly high, you will find wave after wave of stuff coming for the villagers. In fact, you'll find a great deal of... Oh, there we go. Yeah, there's one. Oh my gosh, right. We're going to have to deal with this from a distance because one of the things that has just spawned in there is going to be pretty dangerous for us to deal with right now. There is a Ravager with them, the Illager Beast, as it was called. In fact, there's even a witch over there too. And the witches will heal the other pillagers. They have potions of healing that they can use. So yeah, <laughs> thankfully the golem is helping us here and the golem might actually help with the Ravager as well. But the Ravager over here, oh gosh, yes, there we go. 
Oh my goodness, and that got us the, the brand new Monsters Hunted advancement. <laughs> That's fantastic. We actually managed to slay the Ravager, and that was the last mob on our list after we'd taken out some of the pillagers as well. So you'll find witches spawning with these raids too. You'll find a variety of illagers and, and, and bad stuff spawning with it. I did not expect the waves to go on for this long, but apparently there are a whole bunch of waves. Oh, there we go. We've got another one. <laughs> We've got another one coming in. Let's see if we can keep the Vindicators and stuff away. I have no idea how many of the citizens of this village may have perished. Hopefully they've all managed to run indoors. And it really does seem like bows are going to be the most effective thing at dealing with these guys. Up close and personal is not the way they like to play, especially the Vindicators. <laughs> They're going to be a, a, a problem if you've got axes. We have two... Uh, pillagers remaining let's get rid of one and okay looks like the iron golem may have taken care of the other how many waves are we getting here this seems like an awful lot of waves for this raid considering we only had the first bad omen level oh boy you can hear the horns coming in and that one there is riding a ravager as well so these ravages while they are not rideable by players i really wish they were they will be rideable by pillagers so you will find them directing the ravagers as they go now i'm not sure quite where they're pathfinding to i think they're going towards like the nearest structure to them or one of the nearest entrances to a village but it looks like we have a whole mess of guys on our hands especially now that it's night time and there might be some other hostile mobs roaming around the place before long anyway luckily i have an infinity bow for this raid so it's really not going to be too much of a problem just to stand on the rooftop and take these guys out there's an evoker with them this time which is something new to me. I knew Vokers spawned in the raids, but I didn't expect one to happen this soon. The Ravager is just standing on that hilltop and patrolling right now, which I am fine with. It sounds like a couple of the villagers may have just eaten it <laughs> in the process of this raid. Let's see if we can take care of that Evoker. He is running really quickly. Did not realize they could sprint the way that guy is. Okay, <laughs> let's see if we can take out the Ravager's rider. Maybe that's what's keeping him on top of that sand dune over there in the distance. But looks like we've cleared most of this raid already. Ready? Man, that guy is now the captain. He is sprinting all about the place. There we go. We've taken out the Ravager's rider. Only a couple more hits left on the Ravager, I imagine, but it looks like it is now going to come down into the town. These things are a real pain to deal with. Good. The Evoker is just there. Fantastic. Okay, uh, let's see if we can hop down and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Ravager, because fighting these things in a melee situation is not a good idea. They will be okay if you block <laughs> like this. If you block with a shield, they will get stunned temporarily but they do a whole heap of damage and that one has just broken my shield oh my gosh the raid is still going on when is it going to end hopefully there are still some villagers left alive at the end of all of this but the wave <laughs> the wave of the raid has actually managed to reach me at this point let's see if i can pick up that banner good okay let me try and run around a little bit while there are no ravagers out here and i don't have a shield on me right now so taking on these ranged attackers is going to be very difficult but hopefully we'll be able to knock some of the vindicators back Good stuff. There's one. <laughs> Come at me, buddy. That's right. That's right. Come and get a piece. I know you want some. Two raiders remaining. Let's hope we can take them out very quickly. Okay, that's one with the banner. Very good. And this guy, the evoker. Oh, no. The vexes are here. I don't have a shield. And the raid bar is still recharging. What is even happening <laughs> right now? I need a shield badly. All of the villagers are just gathering around the meeting point thinking, what is going on? There's so much stuff happening right now. Oh, gosh. The vexes are still here and this might be the end of me. Uh, well, if they can fly, so can I. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm going to try and get into the air. Wait for those guys to despawn and see where the last, hopefully the last wave of this raid is coming in from. There is still a Vex or two around here and the Evoker is really <laughs> trying to summon more. Oh gosh. <laughs> the, these villagers had no chance. Raid defeat? What? Uh-oh, the Vexes are on me now. The Vexes are on me, and it seems like the raid is over and we have lost somehow. I think maybe I left the village for too long or something, but it seems like we didn't really succeed there, which is a real shame. It looks like the Iron Golem is having to clean up for me. Does that mean all of the villagers in here got killed? It looks like they might have done. I can hear them mumbling in here. But I don't know quite what that means for us as far as the raid is concerned because, yeah, maybe I left the village for too long or something. I did not realize that that was part of the parameters we were dealing with here. Well, we may as well clear away the last of the pillagers and uh, probably deal with some of the creepers that have wandered into the village in the meantime. But I don't even know what was going on with that. I expected a Bad Omen level 1 raid to be relatively straightforward to deal with, but... 
they just kept piling on and piling on. I can't believe it. I've got nine ominous banners now. I have a crossbow with piercing one. I have so much loot, and we even have an extra totem of undying here because we can farm those thanks to the inclusion of evokers in these raids. But man, I was I was expecting that to come out as a victory, and I was really not expecting it to last for quite that long. Thankfully, there is at least one villager left alive, although he doesn't seem to have any kind of occupation. He's basically going to be everybody in the village now, it seems like. Let's see if anybody else is still here. I wonder if some of them might have managed to escape. The sheep is still alive. I suppose that's a mercy. Oh, and now the skeleton has decided to play the pillager, I suppose. <laughs> well, get out of here. I have no idea what happened there. I think there was just too many waves. And of course, we've taken no measures to protect this village from outsiders. There's even an evoker still over there spinning in the river. Let's see if we can get ourselves another totem of undying for that. Would really prefer if he didn't summon any more vexes though, because those perhaps I think were the most difficult thing to deal with about this whole raid scenario. Sure, I'll take another totem of undying. Why not? Might actually be useful to me in future raids. But maybe in a circumstance in which I spent a little bit more time protecting the village, maybe built a perimeter fence so that the pillagers and so forth couldn't get in, maybe take a few more precautions against evokers and try not to fly too far away from the village boundary, I think maybe that could have ended in a victory for us. But for now, at least it's a good idea to take a look at what the raid mechanics are like and see what we can expect from them in the future because it might make quite a fun little mini game to have a sort of tower defense wave survival thing. My gosh, there are so many totems here. We can actually almost farm these things now. Is there still a Vindicator in this house? I guess there is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can take you out as well, my friend. We don't really want any of these guys lurking around the place in case they desi decide to join future raids. There we go. Get rid of you. Well, evidently, I'm going to have to do a little bit more research into the victory conditions for these raids and how we can defend the village from attacks like this, but it should be relatively straightforward. And at least now we know that the pillager outpost is over there and we can give a go to some of these raids every now and again. For now, we ended up with three totems of undying, 12 emeralds, a whole bunch of these ominous banners and a few crossbows to call our own. And so I think that for the end of this episode, we're going to take a trip back to my enchanting setup at the farmhouse and I think we'll take a look at what enchantments we can put onto this crossbow. Well, 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 here we are back home, and I feel like I need to apologize to these guys. I feel like I have failed your brethren somewhat, but I was doing a little bit of in-flight reading on the flight home, and I think I want to call shenanigans on what just happened there, because it says in the Minecraft wiki that the defeat conditions for a raid are if the village no longer counts as a village, so there are no villagers remaining, or the vindicators have come through and destroyed all the beds. And I'm fairly certain, you guys saw it on camera right here, there was one villager left in the central house and there was definitely at least one bed left in the village. So I really don't know quite what happened there, even though that one villager remained and he, to be honest, might have ended up getting killed in the fullness of time if the raid had continued, but... I still think I had a fair shot at that, and I think it was a little bit mean of the game to remove that chance from me at the end there. So we will have a go at doing a solo raid another time and see how well we get on, but the amount of waves in a raid is dictated by the game's difficulty settings. So right now, as you know, we locked the difficulty on hard quite a while ago. My FOV is like one point off. <laughs> we locked the difficulty on hard a little while ago. On hard mode, you always get seven waves of a raid. In easy mode, you get three. In normal, you get five. In hard, you get seven. And the bad omen effect, I think, just increases the likelihood of certain tougher mob spawning. So, for example, you get more ravagers, you get more evokers, you get more witches and stuff like that if the, uh, the bad omen level is a little bit higher. So... Yeah, we were basically going to get seven waves in that raid no matter what, and that was something I should have better prepared for. So I think this one was on me, and I'm looking forward to having another shot at it further down the line when I am better prepared. For now, let's take a look at what we can do with the crossbows, which I have put here in the shulker box. Let's take out the completely repaired one. Can I put that in there with an arrow in it? I can, okay. So it looks like we have a few different options here for piercing. We have piercing one or piercing three. I think I will go ahead and add piercing three to this one. <laughs> it seems like the obvious choice out of the three. While I've still got all of these levels, I might as well. 
And it looks like we got Unbreaking 3 on that one as well. Fantastic. I will probably take one of my many mending books out of this chest here and add mending to it once I can find an anvil, which I think is over in the storage unit over there. Okay, quick charge. That's another option. Good. <laughs> Good that that's come up. We will also have the opportunity to get these on enchanted books as well, although naturally enchanted books can contain basically any enchantment in the game, give or take one or two of them, like Mending and Frostwalker. So it's probably going to be a better shot to just straight up enchant a crossbow and then combine them if you want multiple effects. So there are three unique enchantments that can be applied to crossbows. We already have one of them, piercing, which basically allows an arrow to travel through a target and hit a target behind. And now if we go into the advancements here, you'll see that one of the advancements is to kill two phantoms with a piercing arrow. So killing two birds with one arrow. I like that, that's, that's a lot of fun. We can also shoot a pillager with a crossbow to get the who's the pillager now advancement. I really should have done that while I was running around fighting all of them. But uh, piercing will actually allow you to hit one additional target per level. So if you have piercing one, it can hit up to two uh, targets. If it has piercing three, it could hit four things in a row, as long as they're all standing in a line, of course, which is not always guaranteed with mobs. Quick Charge also has between one and three levels and allows you to draw the crossbow a little bit faster. So you saw that those pillagers were taking a little while to charge up their crossbows to actually load it with an arrow. Quick Charge diminishes that time, obviously, and it gets faster and faster the more levels you apply. The last unique enchantment you can add to a crossbow is Multi-Shot, which actually fires several arrows and it's only a single level enchantment it doesn't have like multi shot two and three or anything but it will fire three arrows for the price of one so it'll actually fire a spread of arrows and it will only consume one arrow from your inventory when it does that and once you have a little bit of iron you can make your own crossbow without ever encountering pillagers at all all you need is two string either side of a crafting interface like so one iron ingot a tripwire hook which requires another iron ingot to make and three sticks arranged like so in a kind of triangle formation and that's all you'll need to craft your own crossbow which means you can get them in the very early game. One last exciting thing about crossbows is that they have the potential to load up with fireworks <laughs> so you can actually fire fireworks. I'm so glad that I had one last firework on me so that I could show this off. It will only really do any damage if you're firing a firework that has an explosive fire charge in it, if it has a firework star in it. So just firing off these flight fireworks isn't really going to do a whole lot, but it's an interesting alternative to arrows and you can always use them to fire fireworks into the air instead of letting them off by hand or using a dispenser. And you might be thinking, right, we can just use crossbows from now on then, there's no need for bows. Well, you might be wrong there, because unfortunately crossbows cannot be enchanted with the enchantments that I think make the most sense for bows. Things like infinity, which doesn't consume any arrows at all, or power, which increases the power of the bow shot. Now crossbows are natural going to do more damage in any case but they're not going to do as much damage as a good power 4 or power 5 bow. So honestly I don't think the bow is going to be an inferior weapon now crossbows are in the game there's just going to be a little bit more uh, basically options. <laughs> if you want to load up a crossbow and have it ready to fire from your inventory at any time then that's something you can do and you can always fire it through multiple targets which might be useful if you're surrounded by a lot of mobs at a time. Likewise with multi-shot if you want to spread out your arrows and hit multiple things it's basically the uh, the the bow equivalent of sweeping edge with a sword where you can hit multiple targets at once. So that might be worth looking into. However, piercing and multi-shot are mutually exclusive. They can't both be added to crossbows. So you either got to have one or the other, although I'm pretty sure quick charge can be added to both. Of course, as you've seen, crossbows can be enchanted with unbreaking, and I'm pretty sure they can take other enchantments like mending as well, but don't expect you to be able to put all of the enchantments that you have on a bow onto a crossbow. It just doesn't work that way. But I gotta say, crossbows are quite fun, and the fact that your player has a completely different pose <laughs> when you're using them is pretty cool. Makes me feel like a cop, <laughs> I think. But that is gonna be it for this episode, folks. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you enjoyed it, and hopefully we'll be able to complete a successful pillager raid in future that's gonna be it from me for now i'll see you guys next time don't forget to leave a like on the episode if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and i will see you guys soon take care bye for now